guys welcome to the farm my name is Aaron and uh, you know what we have been so crazy busy putting the garden in gearing up our flower farm um, that it's been really hard to keep you all updated uh, so we want to take you around the farm and show you exactly what we're doing where we are compared to a few months ago a few weeks ago even uh, but first, got to go to the post office, and um, this one may get me in trouble. Awesome, thank you. Hello. Oh my gosh, guys. We've been waiting for these birds for a long time. We actually ordered them um, about two months ago because some of our chickens were dying because of hawks and we wanted some guard animals for them. They're notoriously hard to hatch and so you know we it was put off it was rescheduled for another month and you know they finally got here and so we get to introduce them uh, to our brand new turkeys that got here. Uh, so you know things work out fine no matter what uh, we still have a use for them uh, they will be uh, integrated into our new turkey flock and hopefully provide them some excellent adorable protection we already got names pick out so tell me what you think either Hagrid and Hiccup or Frodo and Bilbo I think I'm leaning more towards Frodo and Bilbo so let's talk about little guys. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> you hold that one. Can I see? Yep. Look at this. No. They look like duckies. Yeah. <laughs> but older duckies. Okay. Wait. So which, cute. Is the green Frodo one? And Bilbo. Is the green one Frodo? Uh, oh, is there a green one? Or what do you mean green? The. Oh, what is this? Oh, they're this both green. Great. They're both boys, so they both have a green band on. So these are both Toulouse geese. They are males, um, and we got these geese to be guard geese. Geese are fantastic poultry guardians because they're loud. Usually they're typically bigger than whatever they are guarding, for example, chickens, and so they can deter bigger animals. 
they have fantastic eyesight and they could be looking at the ground and the sky at the same time. So they could they do a really, really good job for aerial predators such as hawks um, and owls and things like that. And uh, these Toulouse geese are pretty big geese. Um, so we're thinking that... Uh, they're already pretty big. They're already right? pretty big, which is a good point because um, like when we put these geese in with our turkeys, our turkey feed is about 30% protein, so these guys will just explode in size. So it's really good actually that our turkeys are a few days older so that they can maintain the same size. But these goslings will imprint on whatever they are with. They'll essentially think they're turkeys and will not, not necessarily act like turkeys, but that they will consider the turkeys part of their flock and will defend them to the death. And we have Silly Goose, who was our guardian for our last batch of turkeys, and she just goes everywhere our turkeys go. And we're hoping that this is gonna be the same with, with these guys. So we're excited. Um, it does make life a little bit easier on a farm. You have to worry a little bit less because you have something watching your flock all the time. Maybe. Geese are probably one of my favorite poultry. They're just adorable. And look at just how calm and this has got to be the fluffiest animal. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you want to be my guardian animal? Just come around with me all the time. It is just laying in my hand. Should we go show mom? Yeah. Okay, Here you hold one. I don't think they'll get packed. I think they'll do pretty good. Alright, should we go introduce them to the turkeys? So it is incredibly important when you are introducing geese to your flock that, you know, like you would not introduce baby goslings to adult chickens. So goslings would be picked on uh, pretty aggressively. So never add young geese to an already established flock. Poultry can be really, really mean. And you can see like they're, they're already kind of like weirded out by each other. Uh, the geese are a little bit more bumbling than the turkeys because they're brand new. They're like barely walking. <laughs> so the turkeys are all huddled up in the corner. They're like, who are these big doofuses in here? They're not doofuses. But they're not doofuses. They'll get to learn to love each other and take care of each other. They're adorable. Turk or geese. They're adorable geese. Named Frodo and Bilbo. Wait, Frodo. Wait, is it Frodo and Bilbo? Or yeah. Frodo and Sam? Frodo and Bilbo. One's disgusting, Nick. Oh, what? He stepped on his head. <laughs> Just gotta give him a little bit. <clears throat> Just gotta give him a little bit and they'll get used to each other. We'll check on them after we do our little tour of the farm. So Rachel, you're 
planting dahlias right now. Yep. What was there before? Ranunculus. Ranunculus, okay. Oh. If the kids could come out and like mulch the pathways, that would be helpful. Okay. Like weed all this stuff and mulch it. Then... Yeah. And should they feed their animals first or come out yeah. and do that? See, we don't even have time to feed animals and give you a tour. But I'm going to give you a tour real quick anyway. Um, so, potatoes are almost done. You know, earlier this year we started a uh, Ruth Stout garden and you can see it is not <laughs> really weed free. But we really didn't do it like textbook Ruth Stout Garden because you're supposed to have the hay down first for a year and then you plant like underneath the hay like you'll move it um, but you'll see some of these are uh, dying back which means they should be potatoes underneath look at that one of our first potatoes so uh, we'll, we'll keep watching these and pretty soon we'll, we'll need to harvest them but uh, I, th I planted the viking potatoes here but apparently a blue potato got in here oh, let's see what this one is a blue potato <laughs> these ones are one of my favorite these are the adirondack blues and i will put those right there for now so yeah sort of weed free uh potatoes are doing great though um we didn't hill them we didn't fertilize them we just got so caught up in all of our other stuff like this is like real life this is real life <laughs> uh see this was supposed to be corn we've got one corn stalk here um but the weeding the weeding we should have put mulch in there um We'll have to figure something out there. So this, real quick, is where we just harvested onions from. So we interplanted tomatoes like halfway with the onions and these are all indeterminate cherry type tomatoes. So I will have to trellis these somehow, I'll probably do the California weave and put some stakes in here um, and keep these upright. You can see we've got a couple Um, of our yellow pears that are already coming up and there's I think green zebras over there yellow pears and then um, these are oh I forget the sweeties or can't remember can't remember if there's the sun golds uh, we love the sun golds so hopefully they're the sun golds so um, and then on the other side we put that uh, Bio 360, it's the biodegradable mulch, plastic mulch, quote unquote, um, and planted some squash in there. So we'll see, we'll see how that does. Next bed is our carrots that we harvested them all. We put them in the refrigerator and this, we haven't decided what there's, this is gonna be next. <laughs> But we did keep all the tops and just put them on top. Um, oh, that's actually probably take that out there. And that's kind of just mulching the bed until we use it next. Lettuce was in here. See the remnants over there. We should have given that to the chickens, but probably peas or beans in here. And the rest of the garden. I'll just point these out. This is Lysianthus. Um, still the stupidest flower in the garden as far as I'm concerned. Um, and we've got some sunflowers over there. Those are green, green sunflowers. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those before, but those are more of a filler sunflower for cut bouquets. And then we've got these two rows of jalapenos and poblanos. And these are sweet 
uh, sweet peppers. Um, and I'm gonna just read while I'm talking to you guys and get this out of here. Try out. Um, and then, so the other day, I took care of uh, our tomatoes. Oh my gosh, dude, these guys are getting big so fast. So these are the Haas, these are the Haasinator tomatoes. And I California weaved these the other day. Every time I come out here, there's just bigger and bigger tomatoes on there. You see those? Um, and uh, looking through these, there's like no pest pressure at all. Um, they're really, you know, look at the foliage. It's just beautiful and full. The stalks are super thick. And um, there's a little bit of a competition going on uh, still. I think it's by August, whoever grows the biggest Haasinator tomato will get a $100 gift card to Haas. And so if you have Hossinator tomatoes or want to give it a go, it's an opportunity to grow your own food and get a little bonus at the end. So um, I just would be happy with like a pound sized tomato. That would be amazing. Um, and then uh, we do have some Bella Rosa tomatoes just right here. Some of them died. There's a little empty plots there um, but it is what it is you guys want to check out the bees here real quick oh my gosh they are That's so good look how busy they are look at how full the pollen they are Dude, that is amazing. Uh, Rachel, last Friday, went to one of the classes at the Bee Box, and uh, we need to do um, a hive inspection here coming up. So, uh, cross your fingers for that. We, we got to get that done uh, and see what they're actually doing on the inside. But they, every day we check them, they're just busy. They're just doing what they're doing, and um, we're super newbies at this. And we just we're just hoping for some success. These Italian bees um, are super good, super docile. Well, haven't had a sting yet, none of us. Uh, but Italian bees are really good for our climate. But they like are constantly constantly busy. There's no even in the winter if we've got flowers, they'll be they'll be doing stuff. It just doesn't get cold enough here um, for them to ever kind of stop and hibernate. So. Oh, super excited. We got a list. We got like just this huge list of things that we've got to do. What's up, Steve? It's hot today, huh? My goodness. Stay in the shade. Maybe go play in those sprinklers over there. <laughs> what do you think about that? You want to go play in the sprinklers? Want to go play in the sprinklers, cool off a little bit? It really has gone from like 80 degrees to 100 degrees. The weather is so crazy right now. And then Next week, it's gonna go back down into the mid 80s. So I guess we'll tolerate this for right now. Laura just told me, Dad, you're really sweaty. Yes, I am. Gotta find a pool. All right, it is so windy. It is so windy out and uh, sorry, bear with us.
all the sunnies that are coming in. They're looking pretty good. I gotta pick these babies. Nope. This one is too far gone already. Look at that. All those bugs inside. That's why you can't let them go further. And you see the holes in the pebbles? Dude! Man! I missed you. So, they're looking good though. Gotta check them every day. Hey, look at our little friend. Little ladybug. Ah, oh, these ones are so pretty. Look at those zinnias. Aren't they so stinking cute? I love them. I gotta go in and trellis these. Oh, dude, look at these guys. Look at these beautiful, beautiful zinnias. the test to see if it's ready or not you uh you take the zinnia and grab it by the base of the stem and then you give it a wiggle so you see how it's just stiff we want it to just have no spring or flop so it's stoop it's stiff and that zinnia is looking good so we would cut that at like the base level and that would be a good one because it's not floppy. Now if it's floppy, like take for example this guy, see how it's flopping around. So that one is not ready to pick. So, guys are rocking. Look at that, that one's good to go. Oh, you guys. So this is why we planted here. This is my secret reason why, because we got that sunset. Ha. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging with us. We really couldn't do this without your support. We love, just sharing this lifestyle with you. So get out there, grow something beautiful, and we'll see you guys next time.